guys, it's Heather with Jumping Spiders USA. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash Jumping Spiders USA. And before we get started, why don't you go ahead and please give this video a like and a comment. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know how the spiders are doing. Um, share, click the little uh, notification bell after you subscribe so you get notifications for all future content and it's good stuff. So today's video and today I will be joined by uh, Jason. And so today's video is going to be about your spider has laid eggs. What the heck do you do now? So this happens a lot. A lot of people, you know, will find a wild caught jumper and um, they may not know her sex and they may not know that she is gravid, AKA pregnant, full of eggs. And so I'm gonna link down in the description to a couple videos on, you know, how to tell sex of your spider and how to tell if your spider may be gravid and if she's gonna lay eggs. And so if you've determined that one, she is female and that two, she is going to lay eggs, so what this is about what we're going to do after you have determined both of those things so let's just recap so a um a mature female jumping spider she will have an epigynum and that is the little um divot like donut thing underneath her abdomen if you look um, underneath it'll be between her book lungs and that signifies that she is mature and that she can mate and um lay eggs and a lot of times if you've got um, a wild caught spider, um, male, mature male spiders have a tendency to hang around the um, molt sac of a female jumping spider who's going into her um, final mature molt. So they're like waiting on her to come out. And a lot of times they, you know, she mates like as soon as she becomes mature. And if you have found a wild caught spider and she has an epigynum, the likelihood of her gravidity, of her being gravid is pretty high. And she only needs to mate that one time um, to lay eggs, you know, as many times as she's gonna lay them for the rest of her life after that. She may lay between three to six egg sacs and she'll do it sequentially. She'll, you know, lay one egg sac, let those babies um, hatch and emerge, and then she'll do it again, and then she'll do it again and do it again, and uh, however many times. And so oftentimes the first um, batch of eggs, the first clutch, will have the most babies that come out of it, the most slings, AKA spiderlings, and then each egg sac after that produces fewer and fewer um, babies. But, you know, you could still have like literally hundreds of babies that you're that you're looking to deal with. So that's how we know um, if she is gravid. And if you have had her since her final molt into maturity and you have not paired her with a male, then you know that whatever legs, oh, legs, then you know that whatever eggs that she's gonna lay are infertile. And um, a mature spider, she's probably going to lay eggs whether they're fertile or not can be determined by those couple of factors we just talked about and if you're unsure like if you've gotten her from a breeder for example if you've gotten her from someone and you don't know what you if you can trust what they're saying or like when they got her it's anybody's best guess so um now that you have these eggs and you've determined you know maybe maybe if they're fertile maybe if they're not so let's say that let's go through first scenario let's say these eggs are infertile what do you do well she's gonna act like they are fertile there she's just gonna act like you know there's babies in there and she's gonna guard her egg sac and that's just what she's gonna do after she um lays them they don't they don't really need her to develop. You know, if something were to happen to the mother, if she died or, you know, something or another, um, or you separated them, the eggs are still going to develop. Every once in a while, you'll find a spider, a mom spider who will eat her eggs. Um, that doesn't usually happen, so it's usually fine you know, perfectly fine to keep her with them, especially if they're infertile, you know, she might just, you know, it's, it's a non-issue, but you can leave her with them and 
and um, she's gonna guard her eggs and she's gonna act like, you know, babies are gonna come out of them. She's gonna do what she does. And she may be in there the whole time with them. And she may or may not come out to eat and drink. You're just gonna keep misting, just like you do. You're gonna mist, you know, give her water in a little squirt bottle. You're gonna do that every day. And you're gonna offer prey. Maybe it's better to offer non-biting prey because she's gonna be pretty much holed up in that um in her egg stack and so you don't want something that's gonna like sneak up on her like maybe not a cricket or it, this sounds mean but if you're going to give her a cricket maybe pull off its back legs i know that sounds awful but spiders gotta eat too y'all cycle of life um so it you know it won't jump up there and um you know get her or whatever but so maybe offer her some non-biting prey, maybe like some flies or like a mealworm or something um, that's gonna hang out near the bottom. And if she eat, wants to eat it, it's okay. And if she doesn't, that is okay too. And she may sit in there for several weeks and eventually she'll just give up and she'll, you know, come out and um, go on with her life as usual. And that is, um, and that is perfectly fine. Like, you know, she'll probably sit in there for a while. Like the, the time, you don't know exactly how long it's gonna be. Fertile versus infertile eggs. Some people, there's a myth out there that you can tell fertile versus infertile eggs based on um, color of the eggs. And that's not really true because fertile eggs, I've seen them clear. I've seen them like milky. I've seen them kind of like white. I've seen them um, a pale yellow. I've seen them a dark yellow, almost orangey color. So they run the gamut. And color is not really gonna tell you if they're fertile or not. One thing that I have seen pretty consistently though, as a, as a perhaps telltale sign of infertile eggs, is if the eggs um, like fall out like slide down uh the enclosure out of the egg sac and or the, like they're kind of runny or you see some like fall out down on the bottom of the enclosure uh i don't know exactly why that is but fertile eggs um tend to clump together and stick together and they don't do that they don't run they don't fall out but sometimes infertile eggs do that so if you've seen eggs that are like running out falling out you can bet that they're probably infertile but even if they're sticking together well and clumping together well, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're fertile either. So let's talk about if her eggs are fertile. What do you do then? Or if you don't know. So it's kind of just a wait and see. And we've talked, I've talked about this in the other videos that like, you know, if you don't want to raise spiderlings, maybe controversial, um, but you could take the egg sack if you, um, want and you could freeze it put it in the freezer and that will stop development or um you could put it outside somewhere and you know like make try to put it in a safe place hope for the best that nothing you know comes along and tries to eat them and they may or may not develop they don't really necessarily need mom or you could you know be a good samaritan and you could um raise these slings you could keep some you could find some homes if they are native to you and i'm gonna put a, a link down to that video too about you know wild caught versus captive bred spiders and making sure that you only release spiders that are native to your area if it's not native to your area do not release those slings so if they're not native to your area, you've got, you know, a couple options. You could, um, oh, scratches. You could freeze them or you could find homes or, and you, or you could raise them yourself. Those are your options if they're not native to your area um, because we do not let non-native creatures go. They could become invasive species and, species and wreck ecosystems and we're just not having that. Don't contribute to that for favor um you and if they are native to you you could let them go outside you could keep some you could let some go what that's you know perfectly fine that's great 
So she, once she lays the eggs, um, it's gonna take about three-ish weeks and then for the eggs to hatch. And then you may see some little, at first when they first um, hatch out of their eggs, they're kind of like a yellowy, creamy, whitish color. And so sometimes they can be really hard to see and you might just like see little shadows, basically like eggs with legs is kind of what you're gonna see in there. And they're really tiny and sometimes they can even look like they're not moving. But if you get like super in there with your, like a macro camera, you can see like their little teeny tiny legs like moving like this. Um, and so once they hatch, that means they are I1, lowercase i1, that means in star one, first in star, they have, um, that's just a way to, to determine what level of development they're at, and they have uh, hatched out of their egg, that's what that means, and that happens about three weeks after she lays them. Now, for, they're gonna stay in there for maybe another three, four weeks, maybe a month after you first see them in there, and then they're gonna get darker and darker um, as, you know, as time goes on so that eventually you're going to see like little black specks in there. And most, most all of them, at least the ones that are commonly kept as pets here in the U S they're going to be black. They all kind of look the same at first and they're all going to be little black specks in the egg sac and they're not going to come out for about another month. So from the time that she has laid them until the time that they emerge from the egg sac, it's going to be about 40 to 50 days, probably closer to 50 days. So you just got to be patient. And then they're going to start to emerge. You might see like one little spider come out. You might see a couple, they might come back in. They might do that for a couple days before then you see like all of them start coming out and staying out. The, at some point they will come out and stay out. That may take a few more days after they start to emerge. And then they're going to start spinning their own little teeny tiny hammocks. And um, then once they emerge, you can put fruit flies, you know, like flightless fruit flies in there. And I'll put some links like where you can get those. You can get them off Amazon from like Josh's Frogs. You can get some uh, at your local pet store, like PetSmart, Petco, like that. You can get um, fruit, flightless fruit, fr fruit flies and put them in there. And don't worry if your little tiny baby slings do not eat um immediately you know they i think they eat their um the like whatever's in their egg like the yolk or like whatever that is they eat you know some of that stuff in there so they're not starving um so they may wait a few days to eat and you're just gonna follow the number one rule and i'm gonna link down to that video in the description too you're gonna follow the number one rule and you're not gonna worry because they're wild animals, even if uh, their ancestors 50 times over in front of them are captive bred, they still have all their instincts and they know what they're doing and they don't generally need your help. You know, you just feed them. Um, so sometimes some people separate mom from the babies. Sometimes mom, you know, um, they leave mom with the babies. It's kind of up to you. She's not typically going to hurt them that doesn't usually happen i'm not saying like she never eats her eggs um but it's it'll be up to you like you know what you feel comfortable with with leaving her with them or separating them and if you're going to separate them like you know just wait until she comes out to hunt and get some water and then you can take like a little soft bristled paintbrush and like you know scoop her out into another container and so Oh, another thing that we have kind of skipped over enclosures for um, he's going to take a bath behind us. So um, enclosures for uh, gravid moms and slings. So you want a sling proof container. I always um, uh, endorse, recommend big fat fids. They don't pay me to say that. I just like their enclosures and I'll link to them down in the description as well. And those enclosures are sling proof. The babies aren't coming out of that. Um, 
you could also sometimes like if I know she's gravid and I made a video on how to make these, it's a 32 ounce drink cup and I've got like, you know, a ventilation mesh here, ventilation holes on either side. And typically if I make these for um, moms and or babies, I don't put the flowers in here like this. I don't put the fake flowers in there. I just, you know, like leave the cup like this and then, uh, then she lays her eggs in that and then I transfer her to a new um, new enclosure and then I leave the babies in that. If she has laid eggs in an enclosure that is not really sling proof, you have a couple options. You can take her enclosure and wrap pantyhose around it so the babies aren't, you know, can't um, get out, can't get away. and like, or you could get one of those um, mesh butterfly net enclosure things, and I, I'll link to one of those. Um, you can get one of those and put the whole enclosure in it, and you know, they'll come out, but they're not gonna get outside of the um, butterfly net thing. Okay, so we've laid eggs, and um, maybe we've separated mom, maybe we haven't, but it's, I find that it's generally better to keep the slings together for at least two or three molts until they're like I3, I, I4-ish maybe. Um, probably I3, somewhere around that. It, like when they come out of the egg, they are I1, in star one. And then when they come out of the nest, they've molted one time in the um, egg sac. And then when they emerge from the egg sac, they are I2, second instar. So maybe keep them together one or two more molts after that. Um, it, it makes it so much easier to feed them. If you just have all of them in a big cup like this, you can just dump in a bu bunch of fruit flies and they just, you know, they're all happy to stay together like this. They leave each other alone. Um, they don't eat each other at this point. And, um, it just makes it so much easier to feed them because if you've got like a hundred little slings and you've got like them all in an individual little feeder cup, their own little cup, oh my gosh, that is so tedious and time consuming to feed them. So I keep them together and there is some evidence that um, more of them live if you keep them together for a while. Um, if you separate them you know, that's your prerogative, but I don't typically separate them until they're like around I3, I4, somewhere like that. And then I'll start separating them out into individual little cups, like four ounce cu cups. And sometimes I'll put, um, you know, a couple of them in there together, or, you know, sometimes I'll just, you know, at that point, I'll just put one in each um, little four ounce cup and I decorate them sometimes with those little craft paper tube things from, um, I got get them from Target or the little, uh, what are those things called, pipe cleaners and you know, it's just something for them to hide in and jump around on, climb up. There, I've also seen people worried about, and I think this probably comes from Charlotte's Web, you know, we all know the book and story from when we were kids. Um, that some people are really concerned that their mama spider, that she's going to die soon after she lays eggs. And I'm not saying, um, I'm not saying that that never happens, that she might, you know, die like soon after laying eggs. I'm not saying that never happens, but jumping spiders, you know, she's going to probably lay between three to six, um, egg sacs. And females typically live longer than males. A male, he might be good to make it, you know, like six months after maturity. So he might make it to like, you know, 15-ish months old or so, 18 months old. Like if he makes it 15 to 18 months, he's a geriatric guy. So with the females, oh, oftentimes they make it, you know, a bit longer than that. On average, they'll live longer than a male and they may live, um, Sometimes you'll find people in groups that have like a three-year-old jumping spider and that is an ancient jumping spider. Um, it's more commonly for a female to live, she's a pretty old girl, if she makes it between like 18 months to two years. Like that's, that's a really old jumping spider girl. 
Um, so, and she can start, she gets to maturity around nine ish months old. And then, you know, she can, uh, you know, if you breed her soon after that, then she can lay eggs soon after that. There's not really a set time either. Like if you breed your spider, like when she's gonna lay eggs, she could do it as soon as two or three weeks after she has mated. She may not do it for longer than that. And really like you are at, you are on their timetable. That's all I can say about these spiders. I know I keep saying that in these videos, but like you're on their timetable. They do what they want when they want and they know what they're doing. And that's why you just shouldn't worry because they're just gonna do what they do. And if you worry, it's just like needless worrying. Once they have gotten to about I4 or so, and that's when they're, depending on species, if I4 for like a Regal or an Audax, something that gets about that size um, when mature, I4 might be about housefly size, I4, I5, like the size of a housefly. And once they get to that point, then, you know, their survivability has increased and then you can like you know send them off to their new homes if you are rehoming them to other people and just i know a lot of breeders out there ship in a lot of different ways and they'll tell you oh it's perfectly fine i've asked people at usps if i can you know ship spiders i'm just telling you like it's just a very quick google search can you ship spiders via USPS, United States Postal Service? And it says all spiders, no, you can't. Um, so it's best to use something like ship your reptiles. That's like a third party service that works through FedEx. They ship through FedEx and you can buy, um, you can buy uh, shipping containers like safe and good sturdy shipping containers to ship your reptiles. And they've got like overnight options or two day delivery. And you know, that's what you can do when they get to that size, or you can just keep them yourself and keep watching them develop and grow. And it's a lot of fun to watch um, little tiny babies from the time that, you know, mama has laid an egg and to all the way through development. Like that is a super fun thing for me about um, rearing jumping spiders. I love watching that process. So I hope that's been helpful. And if there's anything else that you wanna know, if you have any other questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments and or join us over on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash jumping spiders USA. And good luck, I'm rooting for you and we hope to see you over there.